Hi everyone, it's Char. Welcome back to my channel. I am back from my two week vacation back in New York and I'm so excited to be filming again. This is actually uh, the closest we'll get to real time because I am filming this the morning of when this video will go up. But I know that the year is over in two weeks and technically uh november was a long time ago but i didn't have time to record a november wrap up november was one of my best reading months so i wanted to go ahead and tell you about the 13 books that i read in november and how i felt about all of them because as you will see from my reading stats i had a lot of five star reads so without further ado let's jump on in if you new here i always start my reading wrap ups with my reading statistics and I'll have graphics popping up throughout the video just to show you the breakdown of what that actually looks like. All right so in November I read 13 books that totals 3,648 pages for an average of 121 pages per day. The longest book that I read this month was A Soul to Heal by Opal Rain, also one of my most anticipated books, and the shortest book that I read this month was Sweat and Soap Volume 7, a series that I have been loving this year. Of the 13 books that I read this month in November, seven of them were five star reads, four of them were four star reads, I had one three star, one two star, and no one star. So that is definitely a win to have the majority, as you can see, of my reads be five and four star reads. Of the books that I read and the authors, three of the authors were repeat authors and 10 were new to me. That number is slightly skewed because of that 10. There's one author, Karina Halley, I think her name is. Um, I read one of her books and then immediately read the sequel in that series. So that's that is always a little bit skewed if I read an author that's new to me and then read another book from them in that same month. In terms of the formatting of the books that I read, three of the books I read physically, four of the books I listened to on audiobook, and six of the books I read via ebook. And where I got those books from, four were from Scribd, one was from my own personal library, so a book that I owned, four I read on Kindle Unlimited, and four I read from the library. So I love that I utilized my library um, in November. So that looks great. If I can just take a pause and say, I feel so out of practice. <laughs> with recording videos. I've been gone for two weeks and suddenly I forget how to record. So if you notice any awkwardness, that's why. Don't worry, I'll get over it very quickly. All right, and for the sake of ease, I'm going to jump in and tell you my thoughts on all of the books that I read in the order that I read them in. So the first book that I read in November was Sweet Berries by C.M. Nacosta. If you saw the reading vlog where I read this, then you will know that I absolutely love this book. It is a book that I gave five stars. This story follows a woman if you're new here characters names okay they fly out of my head as soon as I'm reading the book or even while I'm reading the book so we're just gonna say this person and this other person okay so there's usually only two characters main characters in the romance so in this book our female character she has moved to this town she's like an event planner and social media manager at this farm uh the morning glory milking farm if you recognize that title my girl is hella fucking horny like she's super horny she goes home she's masturbating she hears a thump in her tree outside of her window, realizes that she has a peeping Tom who is watching her and she is very much into that. This peeping Tom turns out to be a Mothman. Don't look up Mothman, just look at the cover, okay? This is what a Mothman looks like. He is very sweet and very nerdy and very much like obsessed with our character. It is a super cute story and his dick vibrates and I had a good time with it, okay? It was a great time for me. I gave it five stars. Then continuing on with a monster romance. I read The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. Technically this was mixed media because I had it on Kindle Unlimited but it was also available on Scribd. But the primary format that I read this in was audiobook on Scribd. The Dragon's Bride follows this woman who has just escaped an abusive relationship and the way that she has done that is by making a deal with a demon. And this demon says I will help you get out of this situation and and as part of our deal, I am going to auction you off to a lord in our world. She agrees to that and she gets auctioned off to a dragon lord. And very much like fantasy, she is his bride temporarily. He needs an heir. She refuses to have a child because she would have to leave that child behind and she doesn't see herself staying. They 
I see. Pretty much instantly have chemistry because this book is mainly erotica. They are there to bang and have good times. My boy is a dragon, okay? And technically to eat her out, he does have to pretty much eat her entire torso to reach her pussy. So do with that information what you will. But I believe he also has two dicks. So also do with that information what you will. I actually really like their relationships. I like their dynamics and I like them as a couple and how they grew to kind of slowly start to fall in love. I don't see it as insta love. There's definitely a lot of attraction there, but they gradually fall in love. And I think they continue to fall in love uh, after the book is over. It was a Katie Robert book that I really enjoyed and I ended up giving it like four and a half to five stars. Then I read A Soul to Heal by Opal Rain. This is the sequel to A Soul to Take. I think a soul to take or a soul to keep something like that <laughs> her first book in the dusk walker series in this world during the industrial revolution a like rip opens up and it essentially unleashes demons into the human world halting all of human progress in a soul to heal we are following nameless nameless is a dusk walker his fellow dusk walker has found a bride in the first book and in this book he also wants a bride because dusk walkers are very lonely only and in the mythology and lore of this world dusk walkers gain more humanity and more human feelings uh via the consumption of humans so he's eaten a lot of people he's not as intelligent as he could be because he's fairly young and hasn't eaten a lot of people but he just wants a companion he wants the love and happiness that his fellow dusk walker has one day he's walking around and this woman literally falls out of the sky and onto him and this is their love story so the one that falls onto him is delora and delora was actually thrown into the veil this is demonic underworld uh for a crime that she has committed and the punishment for that is execution via being thrown into the veil a lot of this book is exploration of delora's mental health her coming to terms with her grief and her guilt over what she has done and she is really immensely suffering with severe depression throughout this book and this book follows her falling in love with Nameless but also trying to find happiness in this new version of her life. I gave this book two stars. That's really disappointing to me because I gave the first book five stars. This was one of my most anticipated when I found out the sequel was coming out in October. Um, I didn't like it. I have a vlog where I did read this book so I'll have it somewhere in the video or in the description so you can check that out if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts. What this boils down to is that this book is way too long, it doesn't feel like it has a concrete plot that is tying the whole things together and it's ultimately just a series of scenes with Nameless and Delora. There is no overarching plot driving the story forward um, and there is not enough happening to justify a nearly 600 page book. Moving swiftly along though we will go on to that time I got drunk and needed a love potion at a werewolf. This is by Kimberly Lemming. I was so surprised that I loved this book as much as I did. I kind of gave it a four and a half to a five star range. We started off the month of November strong. That time I got drunk and needed a love potion at a werewolf we are following cinnamon is that her name no brie because her family's named after cheese <laughs> Her name is Brie and Brie is at this bar and she's being harassed by this farmer and this farmer is ill okay he wants to marry her but the only reason he wants to marry her is for money and she's refusing so the farmer slips a love potion into her drink trying to drug her because what the love potion does is makes the first person that you see you fall in love with them and the first person that she would have seen was the farmer she doesn't drink it though she gets mad she takes the drink and she throws it the farmer ducks and it ends up hitting a werewolf behind her he turns around to see who threw the drink at him and she said it's brie and he immediately goes my faded mate my one true love i finally found you how many kids do you want let's go buy a cottage come here and then she's like no you're under the influence of a love potion so this whole book is he's a werewolf so he's like you're my faded mate like this is not a love potion and she's like i can't be with you because you're under the influence of a love potion that is not ethically okay it's them falling in love and him trying to convince her like 
this love potion has nothing to do with how I feel about you. It is a wild, funny, good time. It is not a story that it's taking itself seriously at all. Do not go in expecting that. You are here to laugh. You are here to giggle. You are here to enjoy the cozy world of this fantasy setting. And you are here to watch these two fall in love and have lots of sexy times. It was a great time for me. I feel like it was all of the cozy fantasy romance that I wanted for the month and I was happy that I read it. Then I did a 12 hour reading vlog. So if you haven't seen that, again, I'll have it linked somewhere in the video. I feel editing me glaring at me from the future because that's going to be fun to edit but you're welcome so in that I read quite a few books and I started with a bunch but let's start with wash day diaries so wash day diaries is a really fun graphic novel about these four women who are living in the Bronx and it is just about them their friendship and little stories of their life I'm not selling that well but the illustration is fantastic I love the undertone of the book like like in the background scenes you can see things happening like gentrification I just really enjoyed it and I mostly love the friendship between these four women and the topics that are covered that's all I have to say about it but I will tell you this is one of my favorite graphic novels that I read it was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards I'm sad to see that it did not win but it was still a fantastic book and I highly recommend the graphic novel to you then I finally read The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan I gave this book a Again, like the four to five star range I think more like four and a half stars I loved the pool boy so the pool boy has been on my TBR for a long time it is a favorite for a lot of people and I know that it has quite a bit of popularity I saw the pool boy on script and decided I wanted to give that a listen in between the graphic novels and mangas that I was reading especially after reading monstrous which I'll tell you about in a moment the pool boy follows a woman who is divorced from her husband husband and she is essentially in her hot girl era she is like I'm going to have a good time do everything that I've always wanted to do be who I want to be and have lots of sexy times so she is laying by her pool topless and she doesn't realize that her pool boy is coming over because normally she's at work when he comes over he sees her out just titties out and he's like I've always had a crush on you let's fuck so they have a mutual masturbation scene. They fall in love. He's trying to build his career. She's trying to help him. They are having lots of sexy times. But did I mention that the pool boy is her best friend's son? This is an age gap taboo romance. Now, let me tell you, she does not meet him until he is 18 years old. She never met him while he was a kid. She was never around him. She only met him as he was graduating from high school because that is when the family moves in and he has always been very much in love with her and obsessed with her since he saw her and got to know her as his mom's best friend. I really enjoyed it. I think that the resolution at the end was a little too neat and that I really don't foresee his mom behaving in the way that she did by the end of that story. A little bit too easy but I still really enjoyed this story. The sex was hot. The relationship was really good um, and really good. Uh? It was cute for what it was is what I will say and it was just a smutty good time. Moving on to Sweat and Soap Volume 7. This is the seventh book in a manga series so there's not much that I can tell you. I can tell you that we are following two co-workers who work at like a set factory. I kind of picture it like Bath and Body Works right? They work at the Bath and Body Works headquarters in my mind. So in the first book our female character she sweats a lot like and she's always been bullied for it and she's very insecure about that but our male character does so well in his career as someone who like makes the fragrances because he has a such a strong sense of smell he smells her and he's like I love that smell I love that scent he's like immediately obsessed with it and they decide to work together as he tries to create a scent based around like the undertones of her smell that sounds weird the first book is weird. He definitely has a scent kink, okay? Just keep that in mind. But it gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter and more romantic as it goes on and you are literally just following the progression of their relationship and the milestones they hit in their relationship and as they like slowly fall more and more in love. In book seven, we are following these two characters still and this time our female main character is getting ready to meet 
his family and that is what this story is about it is cute it is sweet it is exactly what i'm looking for in the sweat and soap series and i give it four stars just because it's a regular like manga size it didn't feel long but the entire story of the manga was like the build up to her meeting his family and then meeting his family so it just felt very short another book that had been on my tbr for a long time so in november i definitely worked through my tbr is monstrous volume one i went into the this completely blind and in hindsight I should not have done that because this book is not light fluffy good times okay this book is graphic violent um bloody full of gore very emotionally heavy graphic depictions of torture of children discussions of rape like so many content warnings and so many trigger warnings that I am just going to really encourage you to look at before you jump into this book because it is a lot. With that said, I give it five stars because this book is about war and crimes against humanity. The reason why I say this is because this is a fantasy. So lots of the creatures that are actually being attacked are not human, but they have like human-like emotions, expressions. They're just mythical creatures. I love this book. I thought it was very well done. The world is absolutely fascinating the crimes are horrendous and I think that it does what it set out to do it creates a very realistic and very heavy and difficult picture of war which is the reality and I really really enjoyed it it's been a long time since I've read it but I will tell you the art is beautiful the story is so heavy but it builds well because we're following this character who has been sold and tortured her whole life and she has these powers this ability that people kind of want and she is aware of like her own power but she's ultimately trying to figure out like why does she have this power what is this being and where or rather what happened to her mom i'm doing a really shitty job at telling you what this is about you're just gonna have to trust me and that it was good but it was very 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 heavy. And then to end off that 12 hour reading vlog, I've read Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell, another book that has been on my TBR for a long time. This book follows two teenagers, right? They're about to graduate from high school and they have both worked at this like amazing pumpkin patch for a very long time. This is their final year of working there. And our male character has always had this crush on this girl who works on the farm and he's never spoken to her. And his best friend is like, this is our final night here. You are going to talk to her. So they're just like running around the farm together around the pumpkin patch and trying to find her and this girl's nowhere to be found. And it's really just about them and the memories that they have at the pumpkin patch and the things that they love about the pumpkin patch. You get to see it. It is all of like the cozy fall vibes. I really loved it. I thought it was super cute and I'm a big fan of the art style. Coming on to the next few books, I apparently went into a historical romance mood or a royalty mood because the next book that I read was A Nordic King by Karina Halley. I loved this book. Book. So in this book, we are following two characters as always. It is a romance. So we have a nanny. She's like an au pair. So she works in France at the moment. And then we are following the king of Norway. Is that right? We're following the king, right? And the king has lost his wife. We find out in the first chapter what happens. She is gone. She died. And he needs someone to help him raise his two daughters while he is running the country. This woman gets the job as a nanny and it is about them falling in love and them exploring the possibility of a relationship. I will say he falls really hard for her and it was just a cute time. I hadn't read a royalty romance, so it was fun times. It wasn't perfect. I give it four stars, but it was still a really good time for what it was. Then I moved to historical romance with my darling, Duke by Stacey Reed. I'm realizing now how many of these books were actually on my TBR for a long time. So I guess November was also the month where I read through a lot of my TBR. So My Darling Duke is a book that was finally added to Kindle Unlimited. So I was like, yes, let's go. It is my time to read it. My Darling Duke is part of her Wallflower series. So in this book, we are following Kitty. I think her name is Kitty. She is essentially a spinner 
spinster. She's like in her early 20s, but she has had multiple seasons and no suitors. Her family really doesn't have any connections and she understands that without those connections, her sisters are doomed to really terrible lives. So she decides that she is going to pretend to be engaged to this Duke that no one has seen in a long time time and she's going to use his connections to help her sisters out and then she's going to say we broke off the engagement we're not going to get married that will ruin her and her reputation but she is out to save her sisters and to help her sisters have a better life however <laughs> word gets up to mr duke in scotland and he's like since when am I engaged? And he is so curious and so intrigued by the audacity of this woman that he goes down to talk to her. So they decide that they are going to stay fake engaged. He's going to help her out, but she has to agree to come up to his castle in Scotland and they fall in love. He falls for her, she falls for him. He's reluctant to get married because he was disabled and scarred in a really terrible fire at the London Tun. They were very judgmental and very harsh of him and really kind of pushed him to the outskirts of society, but he is still a duke with a lot of power. So he has that base respect, but he feels like if Kitty were to fall in love with him and they did get married, he would be burdening her. So it is about him working through that and her helping him through that and them falling in love. It was a super cute story. Again, I gave it four stars. And I decided that I liked a Nordic King so much that I wanted to read The Royal Rogue. The Royal Rogue follows the sister of a Nordic King. I want to say his name was Axel and his sister is Stella. So we are following Stella and she is divorced. She has a young child. She's pretty much left the limelight behind. But every time her brother goes on vacation, she has to step in to act as the leader until he gets back. That's not the right word. I want to say regent, but I also... <laughs> I think that's the right word but she has to do that and one day she is doing that and she gets a visit from the royal family of Monaco and the king the Nordic king was ruling Denmark so she rules Denmark while he's gone and she gets to visit from the royal family of Monaco they are like this very wild chaotic family with a lot of drama and one of their sons Orlando is the oldest he's set to become the the king of Monaco when his father does eventually pass away but he has a reputation of being like a playboy sleeping with a lot of people she decides eh why not I'm attracted to him let's have some sexy good times they fuck while you know he's there for like a few days and lo and behold my girl does get pregnant this story is about them trying to navigate the situation because he's engaged to someone else and is in a very very sticky situation and she is having his baby so this story is about them and how they fall in love and overcome that. That's what it's supposed to be about. But I only gave this book like two and a half stars because we really don't get a lot of time with the couple and there are way too many like flash forwards and scenes where they're completely separate for it to be even remotely believable they would have fell in love and worked this out and also Orlando was in a situation that had like a relatively a difficult decision but something that was still accessible to him and there were also other ways that they could have solved this situation that it just was not believable it felt like drama for the sake of drama and very shallow drama on top of that because the situation that he is in that could have been explored a lot more from the perspective of his fiance because she is the one that had such high risks in this scenario. It wasn't enough of them for me to enjoy this book and that's ultimately what it came down to. All right and that brings us to the final book. So the final book that I read this month was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is also a Goodreads Choice Awards nominee. It is a very popular book and in this book we are following this woman named Mika. Now Mika is a witch and in this world witches have to hide. She's not allowed to associate with other witches. That draws too much magic. She can't let anyone know that she has magic. People don't believe that there are witches. 
but she has to be very very cautious and very careful and in this world all witches are born and become orphans because of a spell that went wrong they are all cursed so that their families will die when they are very young and witches are kept very isolated so Mika it's like people don't believe in witches so she has an online social media presence where she pretends to be a witch and one day this family sees that and they're like we need a witch because we have three young witches who need magical training here is the situation she's very cautious but she goes up to the house and realizes these three little girls actually are witches and this story is about her kind of finding a family up here and her falling in love with the very grumpy librarian who has been raising these three little girls and is very protective and very cautious of having her there. I gave this three and a half stars and the only reason I did is because I think our main character's name is Jacob is that right? Our main character's love interest Jamie um kind of annoyed me to be honest with you. I feel like he didn't get enough airtime to be a fully developed character and we really didn't get to know a lot about him. To me he felt like a very flat character and his grumpiness was like the most present thing in the book which I feel like was not bad balance because we never got his point of view we didn't get his perspective and we really didn't get to see a lot of him the moments where he was sweet and they were together were kind of brushed over like we just kind of skipped ahead so for that reason I didn't really enjoy it I thought that the ending went off the rails I did enjoy it but I think my expectations were too high for this book because it wasn't something that I ultimately fell in love with and I was expecting to fall in love with it those were all of the 13 books that I read in the month of November. Like I said, I had a really fantastic reading month. I found a lot of favorites. I had a lot of five star reads. Definitely one of my best reading months just in terms of ratings. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I want to say a huge thank you for 100 subscribers. I hit that um, as I was leaving. So thank you so, so, so much for subscribing to the channel. It just really supports me. And if you aren't already subscribed, please do if you would like to subscribe because I would love to have you stick around. With that said, I have to get on to editing this video so that you can see it later this afternoon. So I will see you in my next one. Bye!